Hi friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Missy and today I am so so excited to finally be able to do this video. I am showing you all of my postpartum must-haves. I have just been stressing myself out the whole like third trimester and getting the baby's room painted which is done so that I can then move these tubs up from the basement. I have two postpartum tubs here from my first pregnancy that I'm gonna rip apart and go through. I got some new stuff and I figured I'd share all with you. I did a blog post, I think Paul was probably my first baby, I think he was like six months old, and I did postpartum must-haves and it was basically me just putting it away to the basement. And I did a blog post on everything that I got and all the links. So I think most of that is the same, but anything I bought differently, I will just add to that post. And like I said, I'll link it below. Most of the stuff is from Amazon. So in case you're new to my channel, I am pregnant with my second baby. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I am currently 39 years old. We got pregnant without IVF or any medications. Just, we tried for about three months and we were lucky enough to get pregnant with baby number two. The pregnancy so far has been pretty good. And we are planning on, planning on having a home birth and we're planning on breastfeeding. We shall see what happens, but that is the plan and that's what I'm prepping for with all of this amazing stuff. I am going to do another video solely on the home birth prep stuff because otherwise this video will be like two hours long. So let me stop yapping and get right into it. So like I said, I have two bins over here. Most of it was um, breastfeeding clothes. I got like tank tops and long sleeve shirts and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't know if you wanted to see all of those. I don't plan on taking them out, but if you want me to show you my postpartum clothes that I got, I'd be happy to share that with you. So I'm just gonna start ripping this apart in no particular order, I don't think, whatever's closest to me. This book was very, very helpful. I know it was a glare. It's the what to expect when you're expecting the first year. I kept this, I did get like the second year, I think, and it was just meh. But the first year is very, very helpful. It kind of talks about just everything baby's going through at that point, especially if you're breastfeeding. I think it had kind of generally like, you know, baby should be feeding X amount of time or sleeping X amount of time. So I did keep this. So this is gonna go by my bedside and I kind of just bookmarked it for each month. It does a whole bunch of stuff in here. I mean, there's a reason why this book has been around forever. Let's see, the first copyright was 1989. I'm filming this in 2022. So it kind of talks about getting ready for baby, buying what you should buy for baby, breastfeeding basics, and then it gets into your first year timeline. That's kind of what I was talking about. So the newborn phase, the first month, it's like newborn, it's your baby's first moments, feeding your baby, what you're you wondering about with your baby, all about baby, diapering, burping, bathing, shampooing, Ear care, nose care, nail trimming, all that good stuff. It goes through all the 12 months. And then there's at the very end some like more information like traveling with your baby, keeping your baby healthy. They talk about checkups, shots, doctor calls, fevers, medications, common infant illnesses, most common chronic conditions, treating injuries, first aid, and then some issues you may have like low birth baby weight and all that good stuff. It's just a great reference for new parents and I'm a second time parent and I'm still gonna use this thing. I, like I said, I really like the timeline. So that's what I'm keeping it for. So maybe I'll skip the timeline and talk about right after baby's born. That's what I'm gonna get into. So I got these, I'm sure they have a more fun name. These are actually from the last time and I bought a new box on Amazon. Something absurd, like 50 of them. And we weren't even planning on a home birth when I bought these. We were planning actually with my first to go to the birthing center. So I think this was in our Bradley Method class. They recommended getting these. So it's this big thing. If you have a pet, you call them wee wee pads. That's so that's what I call them. I don't remember what the actual term is. These are medical pads or not animal wee wee pads. This is like the same thing. So we got a pack of these, like I said, not for home birth prep, but for putting in the car if you were in labor to sit on this just to help protect your car if you can. I'd like these postpartum because I was just paranoid that I was going to bleed everywhere afterwards like the next few days. So I would put one on the couch. I put one in my bed uh, when I was sleeping or resting, 
what else did I use these for? Later on, I used these in Paul's crib. If like he was just having a bad night, I would put a fitted sheet in his crib, one of these fitted sheet so that it would go into here and not like mess up his whole bed. So there are many uses for them. I did shove some in my postpartum box just so I would remember to get them and we wouldn't use them for something else. And I think I did give these to another mom. So I have way too many of those. I think the box is like 50. You don't need 50 of these things, but that's how many I have. Okay, so let's talk immediately after baby is born. If you go to a hospital, the hospital is gonna provide you with a lot of this stuff anyway. And I've heard stories where the nurses are like, take more home. Um, but one of my advice from one of my friends was like, you don't need to overbuy Amazon ships like in two days, or you can send somebody to the grocery store to get all of this stuff if you need it. But like I said, I'm not having a hospital birth, so I had to get all this stuff for my own for the birth center, and I have to get all this stuff for my own <sighs> for my home birth. So the first night, first day, whatever, baby's born. I liked these. These are always discreet underwear. They're technically meant for bladder control, but I thought, sorry, I have such bad ingestion. Um, I thought they advertised somewhere on here as postpartum. It might've been on Amazon. So these are ginormous, as you can see. <laughs> it's like a massive thing of underwear, basically, with this huge pad inside. I read online in one of the blogs I was reading on to get these, the Always brand versus, there's another really common bladder control brand. But she liked these and she suggested whatever size you were pre-pregnancy, buy a size up. So I figured out I would have been a large, so I got extra large and I had no problem. So why these are also nice is when you're wearing them and you wanna change them, you don't actually have to pull them off like underwear, you can just rip the sides, like rip, rip, and then pull them off like a diaper, really. I mean, that's what they are. You start with this, and like I said, I have two packs of them. There's only like a few of them in there, just so I don't get off topic. So I wore these all day, the first few days, and there was a rule that my midwife told me. I think she was like, well, definitely every time you use the bathroom, you change all of this get up that I'm about to tell you. So it's like every few hours or so, like you don't wanna pee and then put a gross thing back on. So you are changing them quite often. You don't pee as much as you do when you're pregnant, but you pee a lot or have to go to the bathroom, what have you. So I bought, this is a 15 pack and I didn't even go through the other one. I didn't care for wearing these during the day. I was lucky that my bleeding went down pretty quick. I think after I had definitely two weeks, it was like pretty much done. I, I had girlfriends that it went on and on for weeks. So we'll see how that works. But like I said, I can always order more. But I wore these the first few days all day, every time I changed them and I wore them overnight. Then I kicked these during the day and I'll show you what I used in a second. And I just wore them overnight for quite a while just to make sure, I, did, I just wanna make sure I wasn't gonna leak all over my bed, this fear of that for some reason. So you have this, the giant underpants. And then for those first couple days, I liked this. It's by John Frieda, or I'm sorry, Frieda Mom. She makes, she or he, the company makes a lot of fantastic postpartum stuff. So this I bought on Amazon and it is, how many are in here? An eight pack. And I was pretty sure that they did not expire. I'm gonna have my husband check, but I do not see a expiration date on these. I did not use all of them. I still have quite a few left. One, okay, so I have four left, so that means I used four. So these essentially are a giant maxi pad with an ice pack in them. So you take them out of the bag. Okay, so you don't crack these, you just shake it. There's like little beads in here. So you take this out of this packaging and you shake it and it gets cold and it absorbs as well. So you would do your diaper, then this. So then on top of that, you can either do the tux pads or Farida Mom has her own. I liked these better, the perineal cooling pad liners. Um, they have witch hazel and I'll tell you why I like these, which I believe the tux pads are witch hazel as well. The tux pads are hemorrhoid pads and they're about this big. So what you would do is you would do if you're using the tux pad, you'd open this up between your legs, you put this ice pack and you like shingle them like salami on an Italian slub for lack of a better term. So you'd shingle them on here, you'd probably use about like, I don't know, six or so, and then you pull your underwear up. Could have just been me, user error. When I do that, sometimes they fell off, sometimes they fell in the toilet. It was annoying. 
So why I like this is it's one sheet that fits on here instead of those little individual ones. So you can choose whether you like this or not. I ended up, I started with the tux pads and then found these, bought them, and I like them a lot better. There are 20, 24 pad liners in this pack. You use one for each change, so you go through them sort of quickly. So again, diaper, maxi pad ice pack, perineal wipes. So a lot of people like, what is that one? It's something freeze. I'm blanking on the term. Put a picture here. Everybody talks about it postpartum. I didn't actually get that because Paul came a little bit early, a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that I did get this. This is, again, Freedom Mom. This is their perineal healing foam and it is also witch hazel. All of this just helps um, reduce swelling and speed healing. I had stitches, so Dermablast, that's what it is, Dermablast. A lot of women love Dermablast down there, so you would spray that if you wanted to. I'm use, I use this instead of the Dermablast. This is the perineal healing foam. So for the first couple days, diaper, ice pack, perineal sheet, perineal foam, and you put all of that on. And what I found was that it does feel really nice, but I did not like the sensation of sitting on the ice pack. It was just very bulky and uncomfortable. So I think I did that. Well, I only used four and I used one immediately. The midwives helped me make one immediately after he was born. So I wore that one that night, probably honestly just the first 24 hours I wore the ice packs. It, every woman's completely different. So I didn't buy any more. If for some reason I feel like I need it, I'll just order some more, not a big deal. So after a while I dropped the ice packs. I still did the diaper, the perineal wipes, and the perineal foam for hmm, three or four days or so until I feel like I needed it. But I kept the diaper at night and during the day, I went to these bad boys. These are the Always Maxi. I mean, I don't even remember this being around when I was a teen. This is the extra heavy overnight. So obviously if you're going to this type of pad during the day, you need underwear. So I just was able to fit in my old underwear. Some women like to buy oversized underwear just for those first couple days. Some women like to use these and make those pad circles. I didn't actually do that, but just to show you how big these are, that's how big they are. So they are very big and I did not leak at these and I did the perineal sheet and the foam in this for quite a while. I think I just used these up. And then once it was very, very light and I didn't need the big diaper or the big pad all day. Then I switched to this brand and I found it the last time. So it is Honey Pot and these are perineal, I'm sorry, perineal, postpartum pads. They are not super thick. Let me see if I can pull one out. But I really like this brand for just your period. They make um, panty liners as well, not just postpartum stuff. So to show you how big these are, I mean, they're still pretty big. So this is the honey pot and where was my always? So the always are, the always are a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can tell. These are thinner. That is for sure. The always are not ultra thins. So these are thinner and what makes these so amazingly special is they have essential oils in them. So I would recommend maybe giving these a test drive before you give birth if you decide to go with the honey pot because I did read some women did not like that sensation whatsoever. I personally did. It was very cooling like the witch hazel down there and oh, shove that back in there. So this has essential oils, mint, lavender, and aloe. Well, aloe is not essential oil, but it has mint and lavender and both of those are very strong essential oils, especially when you get them on your skin. Like if you've ever put mint on, I know with migraines, I have a little stick and I put it close to my temples and sometimes it's just like gotten towards my eye and it's not pleasant. So I personally really, really like these, but they weren't for every, every woman does not like those. So I bought two packs of those because I know I used them for a little bit and they were definitely smaller and just more comfortable. So to go with that is the John Frieda, I don't know what you call this, perineal bottle, I guess. So how this works is it screws off and you fill it with water, put the top back on, warm water is quite preferable. Keep that in mind. Not hot, not hot, but not cold. Warm water. Give it a second. And then you would stick this in the toilet between your legs and water shoots out here. So if you have a vaginal birth or stitches down there, you can't wipe for a while. I don't remember how long it is. 
I'm hoping my midwife tells me. But in the very beginning, you can't wipe. So whenever you go to the bathroom, you would use this to clean yourself, spray yourself with water. It's actually quite lovely. And then you would put that whole get up on. I hope none of that was confusing. I think I went rambling around pregnancy brain. So just one more thing about your hoo-ha. My midwife recommended this and I bought it and I went into labor like the next day. So it actually came after my son was born and it didn't come right away. And by the time it came, I was just like, eh, I'm fine. I don't need it. But this is called a sits bath. So this piece of plastic was not very expensive. You would put this over your toilet and it has like these overflow holes here and in the front. So you're not going to like flood your bathroom. I mean, you don't fill it up super, super fast, but you would then put warm water in here and you can do all sorts of things, you know, just look up sits bath. But what I did is I chose to buy, and I think this is the one that was on delay. It came like a week after Paul was born. So this is by Wish Garden Herbal Remedies. And this is after birth still sits bath, new mother's healing respite. I don't know if I said that right. So this says to soak uh, one to three times a day after delivery for up to two weeks, place a handful of uh, into boiling water, simmer for five to 10 minutes, strain out the herbs and remaining liquid to warm bath in the sits, this thing. It doesn't say how long to sit in there. I don't know if this is worth all the effort now that I'm thinking about it, but I have it just in case. So this is the sits bath that my midwife's highly recommended. Not like crucial, but kind of important are to keep with your prenatal vitamins. I really like this company, Rainbow Light. It is really far away, so I don't know if it's gonna focus. This Rainbow Light, and they have a postnatal multivitamin that I switched to after. I mean, it wasn't like emergency. If I still have some prenatals, I'll keep taking that, and then I'll switch to um, the postnatal, especially if you're breastfeeding. It has 19 essential nutrients, provides Oh God, Moringa, traditionally used by breastfeeding mothers for lactation, supports recovery following childbirth, promotes baby's eye brain development, supports immune health with vitamin C and zinc, and supports energy production. So I switched to a postnatal vitamin. And then just some other stuff that I have on hand. It's somewhere in the house. I don't know where it is. I know I have some. Ibuprofen and Tylenol. As, yes, once you have a baby, you can take ibuprofen again. Or Tylenol if you want to. That's kind of important. I think it was, they, it's in the book, but they told me to take a combination of those right after. And then stool softener of your choice. So not laxative, stool softener. So I got this advice from many mamas and they said, just take the stool softener. It's not that you get constipated. Well, I didn't feel like I got constipated. It's just, I was very scared to push. When I sat on the toilet, I felt like my organs were gonna come out. I don't know how else to describe it. So I was like, it was very scary to push. And then I got this tip from another one of my mom friends and she said to take a towel and roll it up and just put it over your belly when you're trying to go to the bathroom not pushing but just like it's a little bit of support and that was very nice too so i don't remember how long it took me to have a bowel movement but i remember being very excited because i was very uncomfortable but i took the stool softeners whatever your doctor ob midwife recommends with the stool softeners they tell you how much to take uh just take it so something nobody told me about was i didn't really have swollen feet pregnant but oh my god did i have swollen feet postpartum it, uh, that was something that I was not expecting whatsoever. I had no idea why it happened and it lasted a really long time for me. I think it was like almost two weeks and my feet were still swollen. So just staying hydrated. Um, Gatorade is really nice, but my midwives were trying to push me away from the chemical stuff. So coconut water is great for electrolytes kind of thing. And I also got a couple different, there's another one somewhere that was easier to put on. I don't know where it is but compression socks. So these, I had to have my husband actually help me put on. It was hilarious, but they do help big time. Keeping your feet elevated, you know, laying in bed with baby, all sorts of good things. So compression socks, I have these, if I need them. Speaking of compression, this was just me. I felt very uncomfortable a few days after giving birth. I just felt, I remember walking around, whenever I walked around, I held my belly with two hands because I just felt very like, crazy loose and like my organs were going to spill out is the only way I can describe it. So my midwife recommended a like belly, does this thing have a name? It's called a waist belt. I got this on Amazon. 
and it was not really comfortable but it helped it's like the equivalent of like running in a regular bra versus wearing a sports bra this is the sports bra for your belly so it was just this compression thing and you're not trying to do it tight this isn't a waist trainer it's basically just to give your belly support so i would wear this during the day wrapped around my belly and it just made me feel more comfortable that that's really what it did it made me feel more comfortable my chiropractor was like take that off the second you don't need it so get conflicting advice sometimes but i like this i kept it because i wish i had it like day one so i will run it by my midwife again to make sure that's okay but i plan on using one of these like belly bands it's like a bigger belly band so breastfeeding i do have a hand-me-down breast pump and to be completely honest i could never figure it out so I, so I do have a breast pump and I don't like it. I've had a couple of my girlfriends who do pump and we're like, oh, that is, that one is awful. It's just like the freebie you get through insurance. So if we decide to pump and need to pump for whatever reason, I'll probably look into getting a different breast pump at that point. So I'm just going to say that I don't have one, even though there is one in this bin. Like I literally could not get any milk out. Like barely any would come out. It was like pointless. With Paul, I pretty much just breastfed. I didn't use the pump at all. So that's what I'm going to go with. So I did in those first couple days, your nipples just get like kind of sore because you're not used to having a little wet mouth on them all the time. So I did get some nipple balm. I know this is also controversial because my lactation consultant was like, don't use that. But um, I did. So I don't remember what band, brand I used before. I did not use this one. This is from Thrive and it's made with soothing botanicals. It's organic. It has extra virgin olive oil, shea butter, marshmallow root, and calendula flower. I think that's for soothe, um, healing, I believe. I saw that somewhere else. So I feel comfortable using this, and it says that there's no parabens, artificial flavor, artificial fragrances, nothing synthetic. I only use this for like in the very, very beginning, and then I, I know I didn't use up the jar whatsoever. So I got some of that. With the exception of all of the postpartum pads and everything I'm throwing away, you, you do need some kind of breast pad because you will leak a lot or a little, depends. I liked these, these were on Amazon. They are kind of like a terry cloth on the inside and then a semi waterproof. It reminds me of like the wet sack if you do cloth diapers, it's like that material. So I have a bunch of these. I just took a handful of them out and I would change them every single time I fed the baby. So unless for some reason it was super duper dry, but I do cloth diapers. So I would just throw these in the bin with cloth diapers. I'm not doing cloth diapers with baby, just to put that in there. I'm not doing cloth diapers with a newborn. I'll wait probably like a month or so, but my older son is two. He's still in diapers. We haven't even, I'm not even talking about diaper training with that little one while having a baby. So like I said, I just throw them in there, wash them. It worked out fine, I have a bunch of them but it is nice sometimes to have the disposables if you're traveling. I don't really go anywhere except for the doctors and I would just throw these in the diaper bag. So these go over your breast, your nipples and your bra kind of holds them in place. So speaking of this, cause you need them at night, I had a couple of night bras that I really, really liked. They were very comfortable. So it's kind of like a very loose sports bra, very loose, like really no support here. The main goal of these bras were to basically hold the nursing pads on. That's pretty much where I had them. I have like three or four of them. Um, I mean, you could just wear this to bed if you wanted to, but I was always freezing. So I have a couple of nursing pajamas. That's what I would recommend too. And they're all like not so nice fabric. I don't know where the pants are for these. I'll have to look. But I have this one that's long sleeve and it's just the top comes up and then you can have access to your breasts for breastfeeding and either you're breastfeeding in a chair or you bring baby back to bed. I'm not gonna get into that, whether you do or don't, but love the PJs. So I had the shirt and their pants somewhere. And then later on, I also got the nightgown, which I might wear. This one has, um, it's hard to see, but there's actually zippers here. I don't know what I'm gonna wear when I actually give birth, but I have just, just those two. I didn't go crazy. I have the shirt and the pants set, and then I have the nightgown. This is probably more for the summer when it was hot, if I take a while, I guess. Then also for breastfeeding, this one they get a little bit older, not so much right now. I link them together. But these are teething necklaces. They're silicone. You wear them around mommy's neck. I don't think you really need this right away. It was just in my box. But I would wear these to kind of just distract Paul while he was 
breastfeeding. Well, actually more focused, so he would breastfeed and he'd play with these instead of like pulling on my hair or getting uber distracted. These worked really well with my son. So I have two of those because I thought I lost one and I did not. And then this is, this is by Carter's. It's 100% cotton, just like a really thick absorbent pad. And what I actually used this for, it's, I didn't technically go in a crib, but what I did is I laid this under our sheet in my bed because I did bring Paul back to our bed many, many times and I breastfed him in bed and, you know, spit ups happen, leaky breast milk happens and it's just nice to have something in between. I have my mattress, the Casper waterproof liner, and then I would put this on there and then I would put um, my sheet. Like I said, spit ups, pee, breast milk, whatever. I use that. That was super, super helpful. I think I'm getting to the end here. So other postpartum things, because I used this immediately, were baby wraps. I really liked baby wrapping. It helps so many things. It helps with your uterus contracting. It helps with breastfeeding. It helps with just mental health for me and bonding with the baby. So pretty much the next day, I baby wore. So I wore baby like all day long. And it's also a great way to keep him away for her away from other people that want to hold your baby because it is literally attached to you. So I did this pretty much like the whole fourth trimester, which is the three months after you give birth. You know, you just had this baby in you for nine months and now here it is, you know, sitting in a bassinet. Sometimes that can be hard to deal with. At least it was for me. So I have, I think three, I purchased one and got one from a girlfriend. These are boba wraps. They are on Amazon. They are like a stretchy material. They are thicker. And I liked these because I could get him really, really snug. Another style. Okay, so this one's a Sully wrap. So the Sully wrap is just very thin material, not really so stretchy. You could still get a really, really good fit, but these are nice for two different reasons. If you are running hot, your house is hot or it's hot outside, the Sully wrap is nicer. The Boba wrap is can be very like... So what I used to do is actually just wear a tank top and put baby on with just like a short sleeve onesie or, you know, no, just a diaper, wrap them in this and then wear something like one of my cardigans now. So if I get hot, I could take that off. But the boba wrap definitely runs hot and the Sully wrap definitely does not. <gasps> I know what I wanted to show you. I don't know where it is. I'll be very sad if I don't know where they are. Let me find, hold on, let me look. Okay, I found them. I do not know why these are so discolored. I hope when I wash them that they clean up a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of gross. If not, I'll just get new ones because they were very expensive. Hakas. I have two of them. These are just the basic ones. They don't have the stand or the cover or anything like that. I love these things in the beginning because when you're feeding on one side, sometimes you dribble on the other. Um, sometimes at night when we were trying to lean off the dream feed we did with Paul, when I was trying to lean off that, just for my own comfort sake, I would put my hakas on just for a couple minutes just to like express them. And they were very, very nice. But like I said, I did not have the ones with the base. I just had a coffee mug by wherever I was feeding and I put them in the coffee mug and it was problem solved. And you, you know, then you have a little handle you could lift them away. I do put them in the dishwasher, never had a problem with that. It does say dishwasher safe. And then I would pour these into little milk bags in the refrigerator and either use them or freeze them, that kind of thing. Love the hakas, they were very inexpensive. So if I cannot get these clean, I am going to buy some more. But now I think I am done. I think that is everything that I had that I wanted to show to you guys. Like I said, I have a blog post, I'll link it below. Everything I just talked about, I will try to link if it's not linked already. And I am getting very excited that I can get all this stuff together for baby, for me and just enjoy being a mom round two. So thank you so much for joining me today. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I'd love it if you'd subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope.